ran into a friend at the lumberyard today and we, we got to talking about how SketchUp can be used for a visual construction calculator for planning angles on different types of projects. He mentioned a simple but interesting project of making a TP framed playground structure for his kids out of some 4x4s. So I thought I'd just put together a quick tutorial to show viewers how well my.sketchup.com can be used as a visual construction calculator for all sorts of projects. From a browser window, I went to my.sketchup.com. That brings up this home screen for the browser-based version of the SketchUp 3D modeling program. And this guy's name is Josh, and we're going to give him the day off with the delete button and just jump right into this project. The main element of this project is going to be a 4x4, 8 feet long. So I'm going to just take the rectangle tool and just draw a box down here on the ground and then I'm just going to type in 3.5 comma 3.5 and give a three and a half inch square box and then with this little push-pull tool here I'm just going to hover over that box and stretch in this up direction and then just type in 96 enter and that'll give a 4x4 that is 8 feet long, just as simple as that. And we're going to triple click on this and then right click a mouse button and we want to make this a component. And I'm not going to get into a lot of explanation of why I'm using these particular steps to create this model, but because all that information is available on other SketchUp tutorials. But I just want to go through the system and show what can be done here. We're going to call this component TP. Post. Simple enough, doesn't matter what we call it. Don't need a description, and we can just say OK. So we have one of these posts, and then we're going to select 30 degrees off of vertical for the orientation of this TP post. So go hover over this move tool and take this one, which is a rotate tool. And then as I hover over this post, I'm going to hover right on a corner, and there's a purple dot and a green circle. I'm going to click once in the horizontal plane, and then I'm just going to pivot up and type 30 enter and that'll set the angle of our post component. Now that we have a post component, we're going to position it to make working on it a little simpler. So I'm just going to orbit around and zoom in and grab the middle of this end line here and then put that on the origin so that this post is centered up on the red line. I'm zoom back out and now we're going to draw a guideline from the blue axis which will make it a plumb line parallel to the ground. I'm going to zoom in and get this right on the middle of this post and there is a purple dot to show that that's in the middle. By hitting the space bar I can get out of that tool. So now the center of the top of the post is on this guideline. The center of the bottom post is on the blue line. Because we want three of these posts oriented around a center point. We're going to do a rotate and copy maneuver. So first thing I'm going to do is going to select this component and then I'm going to grab the rotate tool which is this guy. It's under the move tool menu. I'm going to hover this little protractor looking thing on this vertical guideline and click once. Then I'm going to zoom in and click the center point of the post and hit control. So when I pivot this around, it's going to move a copy of the post, not to move the post itself. And I want to go uh, 360 divided by 3. I want to go 120 degrees. So I just drop the post there. Then I'll type in 120. Oops, not 1230. 120. Enter, which gives us one copy 120 degrees from the first. And before I touch anything else, I will type 2x and hit Enter again. And you can see there by zooming out that we took the first post, which is a component, and spun it around and made three identical posts. The next step is going to be to modify these posts. And I want to cut an angle on the bottom of the post so they would sit evenly on flat ground. So I'm going to go in here to this Draw Shape tool, pick the first rectangle, just draw a big old box on the ground. This makes a plane that will represent the ground. I'm going to click once, right click, reverse faces so it turns white. And then I'm going to double click right click and make that a group. And now we want to cut the bottom of these posts off. If we pivot down you can see the posts are sticking down below the ground. So we want to cut the bottoms of those posts off. So I'm going to double click to get into component edit mode. Take the line tool and click from this corner to this corner. That draws a line across a face. And this big gray square is just a reference for the ground level. So I'm going to select that, grab the move tool, hover over this blue line that goes straight up in the air. I'm just going to slide this down 10 inches just to get it out of the way. 
And because we used it to make a reference for a level line on the bottom of our post component. So now we can go into this post component by double clicking and then I'm going to grab this push pull tool, this one, and push this little triangle, I'll pivot around here, I'm just going to shove this little triangle off to the side. And if you look in the background you can see that the work I'm doing on this post is happening to the other one in the back. I'm just going to push that off to one side and then when I rotate out you can see all the posts are cut off in what would be level to the ground. And if we take our ground and the move tool and move it back up 10 inches on this blue line, 1 0 enter, and the posts are sitting nicely flat on the ground. If we go underground you can see the posts are sitting on that flat plane which is just what we want. So to trim these posts so that they all fit, we need to just come up with the intersecting lines between the posts. So I'll grab one of these components, doesn't matter which one. I picked the back one there just because I could. I'll grab the push-pull tool, just pull this up so that the posts are all too long so we can cut them off. The next thing we'll do is just pivot the model around so we can look underneath where all the posts intersect each other. Now I'll go into one of these post components and draw a couple lines. Grab the pencil tool and zoom in. And I can see that I'm in component edit mode on this one because this is the one that the lines turn the bluest. But as I click these faces, you can see by these faded out blue dots on the other components that they're being affected as well. So the component that's in active edit mode, we're going to draw a couple lines. I'm grabbing this pencil. I'm going to just zoom in and click right here on this center line. And oops, I missed it there, so let's go back. I want to click specifically from the center point to this intersecting point here. There's a little X that shows up, so I clicked once there. And then I'll hit the Escape tool, and then draw another line from the intersecting point to this edge. And you can't tell from this view, but I've made that same line on all these components. So we're just going to get out of Component Edit Mode, take two of these components by holding shift and left clicking. Then we'll take the move tool and just push these guys out of the way. I'm going to drag along this red line and just go 50 inches just to get those out of the way. Now we're going to go back into this component. You can see here that the lines that we drew on one of the posts are visible on all the posts. but We're just working on this one. So now let's draw a guideline by taking the tape measure tool clicking on the center line and then let's do three guide or two guidelines let's put one right here and from there we'll click and put one on this other point and then we'll draw three lines with the pencil grab the pencil tool draw along this guideline straight up here click when you see the little x click zoom around the other side go click click and then we're going to draw a line through the middle of this which you won't be able to see, but it's there. So we're just going to click on the end point, pivot around, and draw where that same line exits. You can see our line. We're just going to stick it right here. So there's now a line inside of that post that you can't see. And we're going to do one more little trick here. I'm just pivoting and orbiting back around the model. I'll do something a little tricky and unusual, but it's a great feature of SketchUp. By drawing a box around these two lines on the bottom, I've selected them. Now we're going to take the Move tool and then we're going to hit Control and we're going to take that and move a copy of this straight up. I actually just park it here out here in outer space and swing around and then I'll grab it by this end and stick it down at this intersection. So I've pivot, if I can pivot around and delete this the plane on the end, you can see that the lines exist inside that space. I'm just going to use the eraser tool and get rid of some of these lines out here. Just erasing away the stuff we don't need. That's how we cut that off. And by retracing this line from this point, specifically up to this point, to get those faces to fill in. And I'm going to delete these guides. Click out of this. And you can see by looking over that we've mitered the other posts as well. So we'll take these two guys with Shift and grab the Move tool. Make sure we got the move tool and then we're just going to slide back along the straight edge here. When it's showing up red, if we type in 50, enter. And you can see with those mouse moves, we've whipped those posts right back into place where they're supposed to be. And they're all cut and trimmed perfectly. Let's move these guys back out of here. 
Let's go 20 inches this time and you can see what we've created here. There's any number of ways of coming up with these compound miter angles, but what I hope to demonstrate is the power of SketchUp to visually see the angles that you're working with, what the completed structure can look like, and adjustments could be made on all this for length, etc. And the purpose of the tutorial is to show the angles that would need to be cut to create the structure in the first place. And we can do that. We know what this bottom angle is. If we take the protractor tool, wait to make it turn green here, hold shift, keep it on this face, and swing this off of an edge. You can see in the lower right hand corner that's a 60 degree angle. It'd be a miter box would be set up 30 degrees to cut that because it's 30 degrees off of 90. The top has a compound angle and the line across the face of the 2x4, take the protractor again, click up here, hold shift when it's in the green direction, get on this little point here, hold an edge, click once, swing over, and click again, and this will be 30 degrees. So the line across the face of this would be 30 degrees. And the last piece of information we need to know is what would the the saw setting B to follow this line. To measure this angle for the saw setting, we can't really take the protractor tool and measure the angle on the bottom of this piece because that's that's not the saw setting. The setting is read from this face, from this long flat face to this mitered face, not across the bottom. So what I'll do is draw a quick piece of geometry to get the measurement we want. I'm just going to grab the rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a box on the side of this TP post component. I'm going to just stretch this box up. The size of the box doesn't matter. The location doesn't really matter. All we want to do is have a surface to index our protractor from. So now with this little piece of geometry stuck on here, grab the protractor tool off of here, index it on this face so it shows up blue and then go right on a corner. I'm going to pivot around to this point and you can see in the value control box in the lower right hand corner that, that it's a 60 degree setting. It's 30 degrees off of horizontal, which would be your saw setting. And that's all the steps that are needed to do a little bit of modeling with SketchUp and figure compound angles with this visual construction calculator. I'll take a few more steps here to spruce up this model a little bit. These steps aren't really necessary, but it might be interesting to see how textures can be applied. So we'll grab the paint bucket tool, which brings up our material selection on the right hand side. We're going to select wood out of this and we'll go into one of these components and double click to enter component edit mode. And I'm just going to triple click this board and let's put this texture on it. And that'll be okay to make it look a little more like redwood, maybe more like cedar in this case. And quickly move our pieces back together. 20 inches this time, put them right where they belong. You can zoom out and collapse the material box and then let's see the guideline down here and we get rid of that. Then we're gonna go into the display, shows what things show up and we're gonna unclick the axis which makes the red, blue, green lines disappear. And let's turn the shadows on and you can see by adjusting the time of the day, how sunshine on this TP structure affects things. And one more thing, let's go hide display, go back to materials double click to get into group edit mode and let's see what one of these vegetations look like. Let's take that guy and let's see this one. Yeah, that's good enough. So by adding materials, you can add a bit of realism to your visual construction calculator projects. And so there you have it. How to use my.sketchup.com, the browser-based 3D modeling software as a visual construction calculator for figuring compound angles on a basic building project. So thanks for stopping by the digital job site. If you find this helpful, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the digital job site. Thanks for watching.